This is Security Weekly. For security professionals, by security professionals. I want to introduce our next guest who is here to give a technical segment. Conrad Constantine is here. And uh, he's going to tell you all about some really cool SIM stuff and making sense of security data using AWSIM, which I think is an awesome name. I can't even start a project without a pretentious, pretentious project name. <laughs> <laughs> so a uh, bit of background on this. i uh, been doing basically instant response stuff for since forever. And I'm usually that guy at the top of the team gluing all the rest of the crap together. So... Anyway, in the last year, I ended up working for a rather awesome company and uh, basically uh, going through and, and building better incident response workflow, knowledge management, stuff like that. And I got to this point where I, I sat there realizing, you know what? Databases really, really suck. They're great if you want to store data, but a lot of security really isn't about data. It's about knowledge. It's about the relationships between things. And after about the fifth iteration of a database schema, going, I'm not smart enough to figure out all the possible ways people would want to link these things together. I kind of dropped it, looked around, and said, there's got to be a better thing out there than, uh, than SQL for storing stuff in. So I ended up running across this weird little technology called, uh, I don't know, the Semantic Web. This, this guy called Berners-Lee might have created it. I don't know, it was the entire reason he wanted to create the damn web in the first place. But it's one of those things that ends up just becoming, you know, people, a lot of people think it's just this there's great tech for you know, academic prototypes, has no use in the real world. And I started looking about, like, how could we actually make this for, uh, for doing security apps with? Because the problem with most SQL stuff is you have to know the relationships between all the points of data going into just designing the schema in the first place. So they're going, well, so we're doing security here. And, like, I, I really kind of think one of the things that you can define about security is you don't know the relationships between everything ahead of time. I mean, every day we discover this, this new interaction, new relationship between things that uh, we've got to find some way to track. And when you do this with SQL, well, you kind of boned. If there isn't a nice little XREF there and a foreign key, then you just can't track that kind of relationship. So I started looking at RDF, uh, Resource Descriptor Framework, which is this semantic technology for describing information in, in the same way human beings think about it. Thing A is related to thing B. And it gets kind of cool. So I've been working on basically this project called Awesome, Advanced Workflow Environment for Security Intelligence and Exposure Management. See what I did there? Yep, yep. I, I, I'm redefining it. <laughs> and the great thing about this is that you don't have to create the schema up ahead of time. You can just uh, start defining data points, creating relationships between them, building applications on top of that, and you can add new relationships directly in the data. You don't need to know a particular query or how to extract that relationship. A lot of SQL, it's, you, know, you have to know the correct outer join between two, three tables to get the kind of information you need because everything needs to be normalized ahead of time. You don't need to do this so much with semantic data. And... The actual data itself looks like the kind of thing you're trying to describe. Might want to increase your font size, kind of. Mm. So says your mother. Yeah, that might be a. You know, how about I just sort of like reduce my desktop resolution to see what that does? Probably about the best way at this point. Probably twelve eighty. So awesome underneath, uh, un underneath all the fancy stuff is essentially just a, a better database for security knowledge and you know, a Django Python application framework on top of it for building security applications really quickly. But building applications that all share a common data set. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really sick of spending most of my job doing extract, transform, load between one set of data to another. If I have to write another parser for another goddamn CSV file ever again, it'll be one too many. Let's drop this down again, and... Oh yeah, and about 10.24. Does that work? Yeah, excellent. So, <laughs> semantic data's got this, uh, the two great features. One, every piece of data is a URL, and the other thing is that everything can be expressed in terms of the triple. Thing A has some relationship to Thing B. 
Network A has IP address, address 100. Incident 1 has credential of that idiot from accounting. Now, I'd love to give uh, more of an actual sort of product demo here, but code frameworks really aren't that interesting. What I do want to do is just sort of give you an idea of uh, how you can run around getting some of this stuff yourself. And I find it. So, this is the one I'm currently using. It's from OpenRDF or Sesame, and it's what's called a triple store. So, I've got a Sparkle query on it. We'll get to that later. Triple stores let us do uh, basically the backend storage of this. I have an object here, type event. Let's find something fun here. Event detected on, and it requires an object of type domain. Of type event. <laughs> so. That will fail. Drink. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So obviously for me, this is uh, based on building a better instant response workflow app. But you know, we have an objective type event and it has these properties. It's using a particular URL. It's using this particular file. It's using this, this credential. It's part of a unified case. It's attached to this particular stage of a kill chain. Yes, I'm rather a fan of kill chains. Has source addresses, has destination addresses, when it was generated on, what it was detected by. In this case, even the uh, time window it was, de it was detected during. The great thing is, is I can keep adding these things as I want without breaking any previous schema. In fact, the whole thing about semantic data, if uh, Sparkle Browser wants to actually respond here, yay, demo fail. Let's try this. Is that I can keep adding objects and relationships as I go in this data store, this knowledge base that's Iterative, emergent, there we go. And because the key part here is, is not tables with fixed values you have to query through to locate and pass, but everything's a, a unique node. I mean, in some senses, if you were to actually put a triple store into a, a regular SQL database, it would literally just be one table of three columns, subject, predicate, object. Thing A has relationship to thing B. But from those relationships, we can end up building some rather complex interactions. Now, the tough thing about this is it's not that greatly supported outside of academia. So uh, the amount of toolkit out there is, is not that wonderfully extensive right now. I'm doing everything in, uh, in Python currently uh, because Python has RDF lib, which is rather neat for stuff. And RDF Alchemy, if you're used to uh, SQL Alchemy on Python, which builds an object relationship model for SQL, RDF Alchemy does about the same thing. But for me, the great thing about semantic data is that I don't have to teach people how to do SQL queries anymore to pull data out of things. Every single object has a distinct URI. So you can build these applications on top of things like HTTP REST, that can interact with each other without any requirement for doing that extract, transform, load, data conversion. Now, for me, doing security work, security apps, this is kind of an appealing factor. So I'm sick of trying to make things work together. I also work for a company that's doing a lot of intelligence sharing, and so many of the standards I see for intelligence sharing are all about trying to define formats to actually put the information into. Well, if you don't really need a specific format, if the format is... What's it? It doesn't sound very standard if you have to work that hard. Exactly. And, and, and that's the thing. is the, 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 the standards are less about what's actually being communicated and how about and more about how to express it in a particular CSV file. Now, the great thing with RDF is that you can make a relationship to a, a, a piece of data in my database. And I can go through through my data store and look at that and see that Oh, there's this relationship to, to your data store. And that relationship is defined in a piece of XML at this URI. So I don't need to know anything about your database. But because the whole schema is exposed within the data itself, I can follow up from, from one node in my data store, follow it through its relationship to yours, 
and keep pivoting and pivoting and pivoting because the way that the relationships are defined is actually exposed within the data. Everything's part of a URI. This is the whole semantic web. So we don't really need to establish any particular data format uh, between us. Uh, just basically publish our existing standards, and RGF will allow us to migrate and, and, and correlate and, and pivot from one data set to the next, just absolutely transparently. We can even say that, hey, you, you describe uh, a vulnerability in one particular definition, and I describe it in another, but these two things are, are essentially interchangeable. So if you're using your definition and you see something that's described as a vulnerability in, in my storage, you can go, okay, that's actually a vulnerability according to my definition, but there may be some specific stuff at a URI published on my set. And this is the thing is one of the great powers of this is that you know, we're, we're security guys, we're, we're knowledge workers, we're not meant to be running around converting data all the time. And this is where the demo really, really, really falls apart. So let's see what I can do. <laughs> so RDF is very class-based. You create classes and essentially functions and properties and then create instances of them. Let's see if I can, uh, there we go, full screen this a bit. So right now, here's, uh, here's my current definition for a security event and has all these relationships to other object types. So you now event may have destination, which is an IP address. It'll change stages, detected on an instance of a timestamp object. Contains indicator, indicators of compromise. For anyone that's used to writing stuff in object oriented programming, this is a, a data store that models that very, very easily and is happy without that, that extreme level of normalization that, uh, that SQL databases do. And the thing with SQL databases is they're designed for quantitative, not qualitative analysis. How many of something, not how many things is it connected to, what are the nature of those relationships? Security is, is mostly qualitative. You know, it's, it, 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 it's the rare security thing that is defined by how many times something happened and not what it happened to. So this is a pretty decent one, though, of course, because I'm working on individual ontologies here. It won't extend to the rest. I was trying to give my sample data here, but it's going to suck, and I'm probably running out of time. <laughs> so and we'll show you what I got. So this idea within, uh, within semantic data is this idea of the ontology. It's a description of everything that can be known about a particular subject. And I've started putting these things together, and these are really the back end of the awesome engine, as essentially a, a, a data storage, information storage engine that holds objects that are related to security. You can extend them, you can change them, but because the way RGF works, your extensions and changes will still remain in compatibility with anyone else using this as a backend data store. Now, my hope here is that people will, you know, write, uh, write security apps, but instead of trying to cobble together some quick and dirty database that works particularly just for that application, they'll use my object relationship model in the awesome framework to just write an application that deals with you know, the actual security task at hand. But as far as storing and presenting that data, they'll use awesome. Because that means that any application they, uh, they, they, they write that uses awesome as that, as, as that backend data access layer can immediately exchange data with everything else. And if you're building user interfaces, you can follow through the data from your application. You can even explore into data created by other applications off the same framework. They don't have to be on the same data store. RDF is all web-based. So it's absolutely transparent because everything is a URI. That URI might be on my server. It might be on your server half the, half the world away. But this idea of the web of things was what Berners-Lee really wanted to, to create with the web. And uh, RTF, the semantic web, is, is kind of turning into uh, what a lot of people are saying about web 3.0. This idea that everything is, is computationally passable. It doesn't require a human to understand all of it. Uh, Google is actually now moving towards uh, uh, a new engine on their end called. Um, uh, now I forgot now. Anyway, I do. I know what I do remember. They have a great slogan for this: uh, the idea of things, not strings. 
In RDF, an IP address is an IP address, and it's defined with the behaviors and dependencies that an IP address has. It's not just a string. For anyone else, you know, for anyone who's had to deal with it, any database storing IP addresses as strings, you know the kind of pain I'm talking about. This idea of, of, of creating a, a, an object-based data store based around the objects and the concepts we use in information security. So, you know, some of my ontologies here are things like risks, exposure, threat surfaces, kill chains, air like kill chains, exploits, software, connections between things. You can build out these massive graphs of the interaction between things and then look at the nature of those graphs. You know, human, uh, human visual cognition is the greatest pattern recognition engine on the universe, better than any correlation engine will ever be. By building these graphs, you can start seeing large-scale patterns, and we can start getting away from that um, tech support model of doing security analysis right now. Start from the larger picture down, and then, you know, and then uh, drill, drill down deductive reasoning and everything, instead of the, uh, the current one event at a time model we seem to have going. How am I doing on time? Uh, I don't know. I've been part of Total four thirty. You got four minutes wrapped up. All righty. So the uh, the framework's done on uh, Python Django. It will act as a standalone server just for storing security information and knowledge in. But the idea is is that people will use this to build security applications from the quickest one-off. I have a particular uh, particular method to to incarnate into a tool to large-scale incident management and, uh, and, and risk management frameworks. I am hoping the first, uh, first beta is going to be out uh, sometime probably towards the end of October. going to be at awesome.net, uh, A-W-E-S-I-E-M.net. Currently, that points to my current employer, which is labs.alienvault.com. I will have a proper website up for it in a while. Uh, it's definitely one of those things that's uh, going to be an, uh, an ongoing project for a, a good chunk. I'm using this to uh, build some of the stuff for my employer, and I like the idea of trying to pitch this as Metasploit for Blue Team, because God knows Blue Team needs some better tools than what we got right now. So, all going to be open, all going to be free, uh, going to be uh, GPL3. Still got to absolutely confirm on that, but it looks like it's going to be GPL3. And uh, basically looking to, to get it extended out to, to be used for uh, other languages. I chose Python because it's kind of popular in the security sphere right now, but I have yeah, at least one Python. person already who's going, why don't you have an Erlang API for this? So, you know, er everyone's got their own thing. All right, am I, uh, am I, am I around to shout yeah, out ring the, ring the cowbell, yep. Shout out, and then, wait, shout out, and then cowbell. Shout out. Uh, okay. Uh, my awesome wife, a great company called Alien Vault, has been the most exciting company I've ever worked for, and all those assholes in 303 are the kids. Yay. Yay, cowbell. <laughs> and with that, we'll take a short break and come back with John Strand's fabulous technical segment. <laughs>